Hello, and welcome to Talk Art. My name is Michael Endicott, and I'll be your host today as we explore the artistic process of prominent Bay Area artists. Talk Art is sponsored by Silicon Valley Open Studios. And every year, in the first three weekends of May, artists up and down the peninsula throw open their studios for the public. I urge you to take advantage of those opportunities, and I think you'll have a great time if you check out the artists in your area. And it's a great thing to do with the entire family. For more information on the artists and when their studios are open and where they're located, check out our website at www.svos.org. Our guest tonight is Judy Kramer. She's a local nature photographer and is the past president of the Palo Alto Camera Club. You can often see her work at the Pacific Art League and also a gallery house on California Avenue in Palo Alto. Welcome, Judy. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you're here, but I'm really curious right off the bat as to why you think of yourself as a late bloomer. Well, because I was a late bloomer. I didn't start until I was 62. I started um, because I had been working um, with a nonprofit that had to close. It had been a very intense project, and when that was over, um, I really wanted to do something that was uh, more nourishing to me. So um, I started uh, learning a little bit more about photography. Joined, I joined the Palo Alto Camera Club that, the, in uh, June of 2005, and that started my photographic life. Oh, wonderful. So you say 2005, that's kind of the crossover period between right. analog film and digital film. Do you have a preference in what kind of photography you like to do? Well, I, I probably, without digital photography, I, I probably wouldn't be a photographer. Um, it, um, it, it just enables you to do so many things. And I, um, um, kind of the first thing I realized, well, I actually had taken some film uh, photos uh, from a trip to New Zealand and Australia, and I was putting together a, a book, um, a scrapbook, and I was putting the photos in, you know, I'd send them to the drugstore, and it, they were four, you know, six by four, and some of, to get them to fit on the page, sometimes I'd trim them. And then I discovered that when they were cropped, they, some of them actually looked better. And it was like, oh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and then um, a little later, um, my daughter was married. And um, at that time, people had digital cameras. My husband had a digital camera at that time. And um, we had a lovely photo that a friend took of my daughter and her new husband um, and in, a, in the church. But the light was coming from above, and so there was a little shadow on her upper lip, and it looked like she had a mustache. Well, you can't have a wedding photo with, a, with your bride having a mustache. So my husband went in with an early version of Photoshop and changed the pixels, and it was then that was when the light bulb went off. Like, you actually can, you don't have to take just what comes back from the camera store or the drug store. You can have an impact on it. And so now I have, you know, I take the pictures. I work on them on the computer, and I print them on my own printer, so I have total control over the creative process. Well, so I, there's no doubt about it that digital certainly makes it um, easy to do and right. also cheaper to do, right. and you don't have the chemicals to wrestle with. Right. Um, as a photographer, you're also an artist, and we're supposed to work on inspiration. How have you been inspired to do photography? Well, I, I think about um, a quote that I read from a photographer, Jan Artus, Artus uh, Bertrand, who said, a photographer is a witness to the art that is the earth. And that really resonated with me. So I call my endeavor earth witness photography because I feel like that's what I'm doing. I'm seeing what's there and um, being a witness to it. And so uh, I noticed that you have a lot of photographs about flowers. Yes. Did that capture your interest? Was it the color, the shapes, or what well, was it? Well, that... I've always loved wildflowers. Even before I was a photographer, we'd go up in the Sierra, and I'd like to identify them. And we took an alpine botany class. And so it was just natural that I would want to take close-ups of, of wildflowers. Um, but I didn't really know how to do it. And it was uh, a year later um, that I took a, work a weekend workshop in Carmel Valley that was about close-up wildflower photography. And I had to rent a macro lens for my camera. And the first time I'm down on the ground, I'm looking at this beautiful 
uh, California poppy bud with dew drops on it and I just fell in love. So that I have loved taking uh, wildflower photography uh, photographs and um, kind of honing how to do it so that I get what I want and I really enjoyed that. So you brought some macros here to, I to show us. I did. And demonstrate. Right. So um, this is a little bird's eye gilia with the bee on it and you know the flower itself is I don't know probably that big and um, if you look at this photo there's no question we have a, a different photo up on the TV right. screen so we should talk about that one for the moment okay we can do that um, the bee on the California poppy um, when you're out I'm always looking for bees I'm always looking for pollinators you know even if the pollinators not there you're still seeing the relationship with the pollinator but um, and I actually did some manipulation in Photoshop because it was a very messy background. So I just made it all black and I turned it a little bit. Um, and um, so you see the poppy is open and the bee is busy getting pollen. Excellent. I love the connections that you make here between the how nature is working as right. well as the beauty. Right. Well, I sometimes think of myself as a photo naturalist, at least around wildflowers. And some, was it the color here that particularly caught your eye and the, the way it's popping? The color and, I mean, there are blue dicks around a lot in the spring, but it has many different um, parts to it, and they were, um, you, you're, you have very little depth of field when you're doing close-up photography, so they were all uh, in about the same plane, so I could get more of it in focus. All right, so let's take a look at a couple more. You brought a demo that I want to get to right. also. So we should look through these a little more quickly, okay. maybe. Well, but this is I, fabulous in the pattern of the wing and the right, lines in this photo. Right, and it's it's a challenge getting um, butterflies because they don't always stay still. But these were wandering around uh, these muleers. Uh, it was at Rancho Cañada del Oro uh, in Santa Clara County, and so I just sat on the ground and I probably took, you know, 20, 30 photographs of it's a northern checker spot. And I always try to get the eyes in focus because you always want to do that when you're getting anything that's live. For some reason, human beings relate to eyes. And uh, I really like this one. And I just love cream cups. They're just so delicate and they have those very interesting, the stamens in the center and then you have the shadow of the stamens and um, the little yellow That's hearts. beautiful. So thank you. And false baby stars they're just lovely and so if I can I always try to get a color background uh, so this was a clump of them so I got the three and the color so background. is that Monet or Manet that I'm seeing in the background here <laughs> good question um, fiddle neck another opportunity there were a lot of them so I found one that I could get parallel to uh, so I could get it in focus and and then so that there was a background that was yellow. Excellent. Oh, the ladybugs. The ladybugs. Oh, I love ladybugs. And um, this was this one was just posing for me. I took about I don't know a lot of photos. I was sitting down on the ground and another hiker came by and said, "Are you all right?" And I said, "Oh, it's okay. I'm a photographer." <laughs> 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 Everything's okay. The photographer's by the side of right. the road. Right, and so wow, another little, these are just tiny flowers, but they have those beautiful stamens and the little red, you know, flowers are designed to attract the pollinator. So those little red lines going into the center tell the pollinator okay. where to come. Excellent. And another ladybug. So um, this one was a kind of a side view. Kind of looks like it's a lot of effort, though, for that ladybug to hang I on there. It prob probably That's great. is. Probably is. And yellow carpets are um, in particular environments. And um, but they just, I mean, look at those little white, the little white ring around the outside. I mean, how precious is that? It looks yeah. like a little button. So Excellent. They're, okay. Again, I they're really tiny. All right, so those are a wonderful overview of sort of right. what you see out there, particularly right. bringing the size. But you also brought some wonderful macro photographs here to talk about. So to talk a little bit about what I think about when I'm out in the field. Um, and so this photo, it's really clear to me as a photographer and to the viewer what it was I wanted you to look at. So it's this, 
this section in here and partly you have this this soft background so there's nothing there that's distracting you have this line coming in so it kind of brings your eye in the lightest part of the photo is the part where I want you to look um, human eyes go to bright areas and um, it's in the upper third pretty much the upper third of the photo so your eye comes in and kind of goes around this Do you area. generally follow the rule of thirds? Um, I don't always, but I sometimes do. So, and the thing that's in focus, the only, is if this had been what was in focus, you would have been very confused about this photo. Mm. So these are all cues that you give the viewer to look at the photo and have the eyes go where you want. Um, one of, this is obviously not a macro <laughs> <laughs> photograph. Um, but I included it because it's an example of, of a large depth of field. So the flowers down here are in focus, the flowers through here are in focus, and it starts to lose focus, but it's really, it's not too blurry even back here. So when you take a landscape photograph, you have a large depth of field. That's what's in front from front to back. And in landscape photography, in general, you want to have a large depth of field. But when you take a close-up, um, the closer you are to your, to your subject, the less depth of field you have. And if, if, I don't know how close you can see it, but two of the stamens are in focus and one isn't. Um, the hairs on this part are in focus, um, but these are falling off because this is falling away. So when you do macro photography you have maybe a half an inch to a quarter of an inch of depth of field and you're how close to this flower when you take that picture? well the flowers you know maybe an inch maybe an inch long inch and a half. You're right up there so here's a good example of something that's not the rule of thirds I put it in the middle um, so the other thing that I think about is what angle of view do I want to have you know, you're walking on the trail and you see a flower you like and you think, oh, I want to get a photo. First of all, get close because I've seen people take pictures of a beautiful flower and they're really far away and nobody has any idea what it is, you, you were, why you took the picture. So you I can almost never be too close. And this was taken from the top. So um, you, can, you can take a flower from the top. Let's go to the next one. Here's one that's from the side. And actually, these little guys are the only thing, practically the only thing that's in focus. But I decided that that was the most important. And it's taken from the side. Sometimes you want to think about trying something from underneath. So this California poppy, you're looking, um, you know, I was close to the ground and looking up at it. So with your macro photography, you're using a lot of the so soft focus part to really just set the stage right, and the canvas. Right. And you can do focus stacking, which is a system of taking a series of photos with different parts of the photo in focus, and you get a lot in focus that way. But I actually like the art of what is it you want to get in focus. And so this is kind of off from the side. So I didn't take it from the top, and I didn't take it from the side, but it's kind of off side. And what type of day are you taking most of these? Do you use the golden hour or? I don't think the golden hour makes that difference, much oh. of a difference with flowers. So you can go out anytime. You can sleep late. Right. And, and sometimes you would like to have um, soft light. So you want to go out when it's, light, when it's cloudy. But other times, the shadows really add something. Like with California poppies, the shadows are just amazing. So um, you have to go out and see, see, what's, see what's there. Um, I included this one because it's a, this is a story about backgrounds. So when you look at this photo, your eye goes to this uh, probably granite in the background, and then you've got this, this bud over here, and you've got this. So I love insects in, in flowers, but uh, they're not always attractive. So, and then this, so I, that's not too good. And this one, this poor little guy has his nose right in the corner. He can hardly breathe. So it's too close to the corner. So if I had been more aware when I took this picture, I might have shaded this. I might have very gently moved this butt over here. I would have flicked this, and I would have stepped back so I had more space here. Well, I didn't do it, but it's, you can do anything in Photoshop. So this is a, um, so 
it's something I could have done in the field, but I, I did it in Photoshop just to show you what, what happens when you get rid of the distractions. So I filled this in, I, got, I cloned that out, I cloned out, the, and I added a little space here. And I wouldn't say it's a perfect photo, but it's certainly, there's no question what you wanted, what I wanted you to look at. Whereas here, your eye goes over here, it goes over there. That's a great convenience of Photoshop, that you can actually add space back into right, the photo. Right, right. And I, I usually try to do what I can in the field, mm -hmm. but I think I was at 10,000 feet and was a little tired, so. Not I going back I out didn't there. Do, yeah, I didn't, didn't do it. So this is the last of the demo, and because the depth of field is so shallow, what you choose is important. And you as the photographer, you're the artist, you get to choose what's in focus. And so in this image, um, I, I used these as being in focus. So I oriented myself so they were the same distance from the camera. But I could have had this part be in focus. I could have had this be in a focus. I could have had this be in focus. So you don't have much to work with and you get to choose what you have in focus. I love the way the flame is on in here and the light is just beaming well, out. Well, Mariposa of lilies are just so amazing. So that's a lot of color, but I understand you also have a passion for black and white. I do. And did you bring some of those in today? Uh, I did. So Let's we'll see if they're, are they up there yet? So this is in Death Valley, which is, uh, you know, the dunes in Death Valley are beautiful. And um, what I love about black and white is you, it's the lines, the textures, um, and the pa patterns, and so you can really see that in this in this photograph with the lines taking you in to the photo, and then you have the lines of the clouds coming down the other way, and then the tree off to the right. Um, it gives you an inner boundary to right, that photograph, so right, your eyes don't get lost right. entirely. And I've always been looking for like the perfect curve on a dune. <laughs> And this is pretty close. Sometimes people ask me if that little bush there, I put it there, but there are no footprints. So it was there, and I stationed myself. Um, you know, when you're taking a picture, you can move up and down. You can get closer and farther, and you can go from left to right. And I stationed myself so that um, that little bush was right in the way. Um, that's in. In, I, in I like the fact that you let insects hang in your flowers sometimes, and then a bush, too. <laughs> I do. Um, uh, clouds are wonderful things in black and white. So this is Hubbard Glacier in Alaska. And we got there, it was a little cloudy, and then the clouds, the low clouds uh, burned off, and we just had these fabulous clouds. So um, that's what as we look from. at some more of these, I'd like to talk about, so what do you do with these photographs and the photos that you take? Um, well, one of the wonderful things about digital photography is that you can do anything with your photos. <laughs> um, so I do, um, um, I do prints, and the, hence the Pacific Art League and Gallery House. Those give me a, a chance to share my photographs. I also share them with Peninsula Open Space Trust and environmental volunteers and um, some other um, environmental organizations. Since I don't do people, I can't do the people issues I care about, but the open space and preservation issues. Um, and um, this is from Iceland, and I was able to uh, use a, it, it actually was the edge of a walkway to hold the camera steady and get those incredible lines and then the blocks are it's a volcanic area and the blocks are hexagonal shaped um, from the columns so I went there last year too if you're a photographer okay. you have to go it's true it, 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 it is true um, but you've also been to the Galapagos I have been to the Galapagos and, the, and you've made a, uh, a book here I see of your I travels did, there that's another thing you do with your photographs it, it is um, and um, I went to the Galapagos and had a wonderful time and um, decided that I wanted my own coffee table book. So I called it Dragons, Pirates, and Clowns because the dragons are the iguanas and the pirates are the, um, um, the birds. And uh, the clowns are, of course, the boobies, particularly the, the blue-footed booby, because um, they do really strange things. So do you recommend to photographers that they take that step of going to a book 
in a collection or Absolutely. printing them up any yeah. way you can? Right. This is done by Blurb, which allows you to do the formatting any way you want. Um, and so I've always done Blurb books, but there are a lot of there are a lot of other companies that do books. You choose your photos, you send, you do what you want with them, you send them off, and they send you a book. It's not it's not inexpensive, but you know, before digital, you couldn't you know I wouldn't be able to have a book. So I know you've been in quite a few shows here on the peninsula, and you mm -hmm. are in Gallery House and Pacific Art League, and you participate in the Silicon Valley Open Studios. I do, and I think. Um, so I joined, a friend of mine asked, asked me to come to her home. She had it out in her garden, beautiful garden. And so I met other artists and had another chance to share my photography. And I've done it there, and then I did it at Gallery House. And um, there's their educational program, so you can learn how to price your photographs. You know, how do you decide how much they, you should charge if you're going to sell them? And um, um, and and then you're in the work, you're in the directory, and I my best sale was to Kaiser, and that's because they were looking in the directory for the kind of photographs they wanted in their in their facility. So it's I've really appreciated being part of Silicon Valley Open Studios. That's uh that's great. And you I see you brought two cameras here today. I did. You. And so what do you shoot with? Um, I'm now shooting with Sony, mirrorless. Um, it it some you know I said I was a um, you know, a late bloomer. So my, my Nikons, which I loved, uh, got kind of heavy to carry around. So mirrorless are, are lighter. And this is my macro lens, so I do the flowers with this. But this um, has a, a, what is it, 20, 24 to 600 millimeter lens. So I got it partly because it was lighter and partly because of the long lens. I was going to Alaska to do bears. And so you don't want to be too close to the bears, right? So the 600 millimeter lets you get wonderful pictures. It gives you enough that. of a head start if they come after you. Right, right. <laughs> and as I said, I only have to run faster than you do. <laughs> and, and a little bit of advice to photographers who are starting out now that digital cameras are actually really quite good, right. no matter what they're right. like. Um, what kind of programs do you think that they should start out with? Well, I think um, it, even if what you use is an iPhone, but you are a, a smartphone, you would like to step your photography up, um, join a camera club because it's full of people. So they're real, it's not just online, they're real people. And um, you talk to them, you get the support you want. When I started, I really didn't know anything about photography. And everything I learned in the beginning was because I was part of the camera club. And supporting people, mentors, you see lots of photos with commentary. And, um, you know, now YouTube has, you know, everything you could ever want about using your camera. So there are a lot of ways to learn. And when you go for a walk, what is it that you're looking for or at? Or what, how does something strike you? Well, if that's a good question. Um, and I, one of the things I like about photography is it's changed the way I see. So when I'm out, you know, Hiking, if I, you know, I'm looking at the flowers, I'm looking for insects, I'm looking for patterns. If I'm in, you know, if I'm in Utah and you have these, so it isn't just this big, beautiful scene, but what are the patterns that you can isolate? Um, and um, yeah, I just look for, look for shadows to give dimension to things, give leading lines to give dimension to things. So all those things make a difference. Okay. So we'll take a look at a few more of your photographs here as we wrap up the show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, I envisioned that when I went and we were with horses and I thought, I want to get a close up of one eye. So You succeeded I, in that. That's yeah, fabulous. So I love the lines that. and I the colors, that. really yeah. the hue in black and white becomes right. very critical. Right. Right. And this was also, um, you know, the lines coming down in the snow, a little bit of cloud, the reflection of the cloud in the lake. Um, you, as I said, the beautiful lines and textures. Um, this is, I've more recently done a little more wildlife photography, so that's the bear at Brooks Falls. Looking for the fish, it was a little early, so he just kept sitting there going, somebody told me there were going to be fish here. <laughs> um, and this was along the road, so we were using our, the car as a blind, and I just thought this moose was so funny the eye and the teeth 
um, just really enjoyed um, getting that shot. And this was from the air because you go to Katmai National Park and you have to fly in a pontoon plane. And the patterns on the ground were just so fabulous. Um, I love that little S curve and the trees around it. And in May, I went to uh, South Africa to do wildlife photography. So this is a kudu at the watering hole. Um, just uh, loved getting those shots in the um, we, we followed uh, three male cheetahs and they posed for us and um, they're so beautiful. And I recently went to Eastern Washington, which is called the Palouse, and it's these wonderful rolling hills. So it's the shadows, it's the patterns. I guess that's, if there's anything that ties my photography together, yeah. it would be well, the patterns and the shapes. This is wonderful. Example of the broad range of what you do. Right. So, because when you said macro and black and white, right. it's clear that you have colors, and this composite that you put together right. here right. is spectacular. Thank and you. so, uh, I really want to thank you for um, coming to join us today and bringing my these, these photographs to us. And I really encourage people to come and see her work uh, in person. Check out her website, which is addresses on the on the show here. Uh, because when you see these photographs and you have the time to really study them up cl close and personally, it is really great. Thank you very much. All Michael. right. So we hope you really enjoyed this visit with Judy Kramer. She has lots to show you in, in real life and not across the video, so I hope you'll check mm -hmm. it out. I hope when the open studios come along uh, that you will look up at Silicon Valley Open Studios. They produce a fabulous catalog that also serves as a guide so you can look and see what kind of art do those artists have? Judy, I uh, really am fun. impressed with this, and I love the first opening shot that you had of the bee. Right. Thank so, you very much. Thank you for coming.